It's time for the 2022.12 Home Assistant release update. So let's just get right into it. So the 2022.12 version of Home Assistant has been released and it's full of all kinds of goodies. So let's just go ahead and jump into what is new. Matter has been added to Home Assistant. It's the first iteration of the integration that they're putting into Home Assistant. It is a new smart home interoperability standard. I'm sure you've heard this term at some point in the last few months or last year, whatever. It is an open source protocol that uh, defines how things interoperate. So if, if you've got different vendors, different brands, different products, they should all operate together and talk to each other under the Matter standard. There is a huge write up here from The Verge that teaches you all about or tells you all about what Matter is. And if you look here, it talks about all of the different aspects of Matter. So if you're interested in that, make sure you read the article. I will link that down below in the description. It is well worth understanding if you're into that kind of thing. In addition, it explains a lot of things that I can't go into in the video today. Uh, now, this version of the release is an alpha, and they say even maybe a developer preview. So you can jump in on the development of Matter, and then you can also commission items or devices if you don't have uh, devices available to you. Matter products are not yet generally available. So it's ready. It's getting ready. Again, it's alpha developer preview, if you will. But as devices start to come online and work continues to be done with Matter, it will continue to uh, be updated. In order to utilize Matter, you need to have a Matter capable radio in your device. And the Home Assistant Yellow comes with a Matter and Zigbee radio. And then there's this one right here. This is the Home Assistant Sky Connect. And it is also a matter and zigbee usb device and these are starting to to show up in different places i happen to get my hands on one uh, so i'm fortunate but they're still being shipped um, i think there's a few shipments coming out uh, at the end of 2022 so if you've already pre-ordered those from some of the suppliers you should start to see some of those all right let's move on to tile cards tile cards start to get features tile cards were introduced in a previous version of home assistant but now you have the ability to have command buttons for vacuum cleaners, brightness slider for lights, and controls for opening and closing and tilting covers. So there's documentation on all of this under the tile cards integration page and some examples of what you can do here. They will continue to add more features to the tile cards, but they're iterating on it a little bit at a time. But it's really neat because you can redefine the way things work. If I were to look at one of my cards right here, and this light card, when you click on the tile card, it brings up the history. In addition, it also allows you to click the little icon to actually do whatever function it is for that. The tile card also, or with the tile card features, they've added some colors to the tile cards. So some of the entities will change colors based on their state, which you see here kind of turning to yellowish a little bit when it's on, and then grayish when it's off. If you look at the history and logbook, the colors also are reflected in there. So the UI has been updated to include some coloring within the different uh, logbook and history. And you'll see here that it turns yellow here for on and gray for off. So it matches what the tile card would actually show on there. All right, so that's tile cards. More to come on that as they develop that. And here's a few more pictures of that on their website. And I just talked about state colors. Uh, the same color logic has been applied to state history and to the logbook. And of course, they would be random in the past. Now they're predictable, recognizable, and above all, looks better, right? Uh, all right, so local calendar, that is a huge thing. They have now added a full-on calendar to Home Assistant. So if we go over here, uh, and you if you add it, you add it via the normal integration. So if we go over here to integrations, on our integrations page, and we click on... Um, the add integration button down here, you'll have the option of selecting the calendar. So you can click on local calendar and it will install it right here. And then once it's installed, it will show over here on the sidebar. So let's go to calendar, here it is. And you'll have a full on calendar where you can add events, uh, whatever you want, test event. And I'll just set this for to whatever day I wanna set it to and then add the event and um, now you'll see it. Now, if you click on the event, you can go ahead and delete the events as well. 
So it works that way. You can also set up recurring, repeating events. So yearly, monthly, daily, weekly. So this is a full on full calendar. In addition to doing that, and here's a calendar page that talks about it. You can also do calendar automations. So you can actually go in here and make things happen. And there's some examples on the calendar pages. I'll link all those down below as well. You can do uh, calendar event notifications. So you can have a persistent notification, which will pop up uh, a notification on the UI, or you can do other actions when you have a calendar event show up. You can have multiple calendars defined. So if you'll notice over here, if I had more than one calendar, I could uh, select between the different calendars here on the left-hand side. Amazing work by Alan Porter. Really um, looking forward to using this rather than in tying in some of my other calendars that I've got in here. So really a fun uh, feature they've added. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Bluetooth proxy using Shelly devices. If you have Shelly devices running firmware version 12.0 or, 12 or later, you can use uh, Bluetooth uh, proxying with those devices to extend your Bluetooth network. I've got some videos on the Bluetooth proxies um, and I've got some uh, other information in my blog post. So look up those if you wanna know more about it. But all of this is to make Bluetooth work better in Home Assistant and also extend the range so that you can use Bluetooth in areas far, far away from where your hub is. Summing entities without templates. This is interesting for Putting together a calculation on adding two devices or two entities together, you always had to go in and you had to um, build a template. Now what you can do is just create a helper. So if we go to uh, integrations or helpers and we want to create a, an entity or a helper with the ability to combine the state of several sensors, then you can click here, give it a name and you can pick um, I, I'm just getting random stuff here, stuff that probably wouldn't go together. And then you could do state characteristics, minimum, maximum, uh, mean, median, uh, most recently statistical and sum, and you can do a precision of decimal places and you submit that. And I, of course I didn't fill everything out, but you can then create a helper that has the sum of multiple entities. That's a really cool thing that you can do without having to build the templates and going into YAML and doing all that kind of work. One thing to note about that is that it looks like the min max helper that is correct. They have renamed min max to combine the state level or combine the state of several sensors. So the name of the entity is this. It used to be min max. Now it is this. Okay. Some other noteworthy features. This is one that um, is very interesting. You can now set your country in default language um, in the general settings, and this allows um, Home Assistant consider that in future features. So if you have a geographically specific feature, then Home Assistant can determine where you're at and they can apply that feature based on that specific region. A whole bunch of more stuff I'm not gonna go through here. You can read about all of these things in the update page, which I'll link down below. By the way, I will, f I will mention that BT Home is now version two and Home Assistant now supports it. BT Home is an open standard for broadcasting sensor data and button presses over Bluetooth uh, LE or BLE. And it talks about all of these things that you can do here and what's going on. It's, it also tells you why they're doing it. So you can read about that more. And then new integrations are all of these right here. Uh, we talked about text, we talked about matter, talked about local calendar, and there's a few others that go along. Push bullet and scrape are now available to be set up through the UI rather than having to do it in the uh, YAML code. And then I've already had some updates since I uh, am a little bit late in releasing this video. And of course, always look through breaking changes to make sure there's nothing here that affects stuff that you are doing. If you update uh, and you don't read this first, you could potentially break some of your stuff. All right, that was a quick update for uh, just going through what's new in Home Assistant 2022.12. Um, let me show you one more thing here, something that I will have to correct and the reason why I haven't done anything in my production system. I cannot upgrade, upgrade my production system because I haven't fixed this thing yet. Three months ago, Home Assistant told me that they're going to deprecate the MQTT sensor um, UI or the sensor uh, YAML the way I have it set up and I haven't fixed that yet on my production system. Shame on me. 
Make sure you're paying attention to anything here in your repair section before you do an upgrade in addition to looking at breaking changes because if I were to upgrade right now, all of my MQTT stuff that is under the old uh, format for the layout will be incorrect or will stop working. So I need to fix this before I upgrade. So I'm now forced into doing that before I can do the 2022.12 update. So keep that in mind when you're doing updates that if there's anything wrong in the breaking changes or in the repair center, in addition to the breaking changes, that you update that and make sure it works before you do a home assistant update. All right, let me know if you have any questions down below. I'll link all the stuff I talked about uh, in the description down below. Hit me up on Discord. Uh, and if you're not a subscriber, I would really appreciate that you subscribe to the channel. Just push that button real fast. And thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next video.